we are coming to um, to the end here in the next 15, 20 minutes, but there's so much to reflect on and to, to digest. Um, I'm gonna be bringing up two incredible leaders in a minute here to help us with that and to understand kind of where do we go, where do we go next? Um, and so, but before I do that, I was just gonna just note a couple of things really quickly. That the new fellows who are coming in, the seven of you who have probably been sitting there today going like, oh my goodness, <laughs> wow, okay, how are we gonna do this? Um, we got a community, we got you, right? And there's, and there's so much that, I mean, this kind of these concepts of co-design are gonna come through what you're doing. Tomorrow, just for those who, who might be wondering what's next, tomorrow we are having our first um, design charrette, design workshop, where we're bringing those seven fellows together with our design thinking coach, um, Christine Malden. And I think Christine is online now, but she was here earlier today. We're so grateful to her. Um, as well as new advisors and others who have been seeing how this whole process process unfolds. Um, and they're going to be working on some those really cool issues around family engagement in the Parents as Allies program. So stay tuned, because a year from now, we're going to hear what they came up with, what were some of the cool um, ideas that came out of their work in, the, in a cross-sector way. So now, here we go. We've got um, some incredible big thinkers to bring on stage to help us understand where we can go forward with all of this. Um, I am thrilled to introduce, um, and you guys can start coming out if you'd like, Michael Levine, a friend, a co-author, um, an incredible leader in the world of all these cross-sector spaces, whether it's philanthropy or media, um, science of learning, and, and many more. So Michael, thank you for being with us. And Ralph Smith, the Managing Director for the Campaign for Grade Level Reading. Um, Ralph has been a mentor to all of us at New America for so many years, and Ralph, it's made a huge difference across our, our work in the early childhood space, and we're just incredibly grateful for your leadership. So thank you to both of you. And I'm gonna leave it to you. Wow, we've got 15 minutes to summarize an amazing day. Um, it really is, it's a bit of a movement here, and Ralph and I are gonna have a little bit of a conversation, but we also have some thoughts and hacks that we're gonna share, so, um, I've, I've been sitting here just amazed by the community that's been developed here, and I took some notes during the day, and I'm gonna get up, and then Ralph is gonna respond to me, and we're gonna kinda, cause nobody's gotten up, we gotta get up, and we're gonna get down, but we only have about 15, 20 minutes, so here we go. So I have, um, transferred it here. I've been thinking, I had a few thoughts when I came here, and of course it all changed, um, about, what are sort of four challenges and opportunities for the LXX, LSX collaboration by sector movement? And what are four hacks, as you guys have taught me, that we might be sort of thinking about as kind of early wins? So um, here's sort of observations from the day, um, the challenges and the opportunities. One, you know, I think we learned from Sesame Street that collaboration is a natural act, that all learning is social. Young children, as Rosemary and Annie demonstrated so well, are ready, willing, and able to build collaborative communities, but us adults, we kind of get in the way. And so without meaningful you know, changes you know, in the school and workplace culture, they're learning to mimic the adult you know, cues that sustain a culture of competitiveness, you know, zero-sumness, and charged discourse. The second challenge and opportunity is that Current research, it really is an opportunity, current research and best practices in education, family support, media production, and organizational change are actually aligned. They all stress new forms of team building, co-design, silo busting techniques. So the LSX sectors can now translate the learning science research to build cultural knowledge, to strengthen human relationships and promote meaningful belonging, that's, a, that's real progress in the last 10 or 15 years. But those really stubborn systems of professional credentialing, policy making, and progress assessments for child and family flourishing are often narrow, specialized, and separated by boundaries that make bridge building and collaboration a challenge. And then the fourth challenge and opportunity is 
we've got these models, right? We've got important collaboration models across the LFSEC sectors, multi-institution research consortia, partnerships between citizen journalists, news organizations, interagency children's cabinets to drive program integration and collaboration, models like Ralph's and Greg's, community mobilization work that have really compelling approaches. But while these efforts advance the LSX promise that collaboration leads to better outcomes, my observation is they've not scaled to tipping point status. So while 50 leaders can see the movement, they need more infrastructure investments to really ch change the world. So those are the challenges and opportunities as I see them. Four possible, I don't know what we call them, hacks. Um, all right, on the better measurement side, um, we've heard a little bit about the fact that incentives for collaboration are not well connected to kids' family or community outcome measures. So I think we should build on the promising work being done in four areas. One, the benefits of whole child, whole learner, program co-design, we heard a little bit about that. Two, how about game-based assessment as a pre-K to 12 system hack? How about that kind of unifying the whole system? Oh, we should have more playful assessment across the board. Um, third, inventing assessment tools for collaborative, collaboratory backbone organizations. These things have been created, but who's measuring their real impact with systemic or systematic evaluation? And then fourth, I'm a big fan of the long-term cost-benefit studies of things like you know, Head Start. Well, what about long-term cost-benefit studies of education redesign initiatives like Ralph's Campaign for Grade Level Reading where Greg and companies you know, rethink, um, remake, remake education? Second, on the policy side, how about these hacks? How about new incentives for collaborative policymaking? Here's a few thoughts. In schools and in cities, we create better incentives for youth and parent allyship. Um, maybe there are new governments, governance structures. I mean, nothing is new, but we could have some really interesting new governance structures, new councils. In states, how about we get governors and business leaders to champion the children's cabinets that they once created? Pre-K to 16 collaboration initiatives, and how about school family child care partnerships? At the national level, can we prioritize more incentives for social innovation, whole learner impact statements, and research consortia led by multidisciplinary federal agencies? Shout out to Sarah's new work. In higher ed, how about this hack? Can we craft research and training efforts to better define what I would describe as the art and science of collaboration, from new approaches to teaching design thinking? How about some business ethics? conflict resolution and education leadership and citizen journalism. And then my final hack is sort of for this community. What can we do collectively on you know, building and bringing the stories of collaboration to you know, mass audience, to mass scale? So journalists, media makers, and advocates can make results-driven collaborative processes the lens, as this conference is named, for reporting and public engagement, one of the lenses. The LXS community could create a multimedia online documentation store to advance the uncommon measures and case studies we've been hearing about today that demonstrate how collaboration can benefit families, children, communities. And my last thought is, how about asking Elmo, Bluey, Wow in the World, Roblox, and Minecraft game developers to model collaborative problem solving in their joyful work. Those are my thoughts. You know, Michael is that smarter, younger brother that you, that, that, that you, sort, of, that you, you sort of want to beat up every now and then. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm delighted. Uh, and coming at the end of this day it is really a tall order. But let me start uh, by saying that when you sit down and you spend the day and you hear wonderful ways to advance joyful learning, to take advantage of diversity, 
and make it a plus and not a minus, to take belonging and make it something more than just a word, but make it real in the lives of uh, children, make it real in schools and classrooms. There's something, something about it that's fascinating, enthralling, titillating, and inspires hope. And as whenever I say hope, I remind myself that hope is not a strategy. But I also remember that uh, Secretary Clinton says, hope may not be a strategy, but it is the fuel. It is the fuel for the persistence that's necessary for change and transformation. And I must say that today's uh, presentations were hope-filled. And it takes me back to uh, Paul Revel. Paul Revel was the state commissioner in Massachusetts 20 years ago. And after he stepped out of being state commissioner, he noted that Massachusetts could compete, as he said, with any of country in the world in terms of its academic achievement. And while we were all sort of kind of taking that in and saying, but wait a minute, I looked at those PISA scores. <laughs> and he, he paused and he said, if you, t if you take the top half of the class, he says, because the top half of the class can compete with anybody. He says, we have done all of the things in Massachusetts that will create an excellent school system. And we also have the bottom, the largest gap in the nation. He says, so what works for the top half clearly does not for the bottom half. And I've taken that with me for the last two decades, and I bring it here this afternoon. Because what we've been talking about is an emerging technology. And we may not see this conversation as being an emerging technology, but it is, because technology is simply the application of science and conceptual principles for practical purposes means, and, and goals. We are in the process of inventing a, te a powerful technology. And the test of new technology ought to be a version of the Hippocratic Oath. And it's the test that, that I apply to AL and all our other technologies. Do no harm. There's one. And if we stretch the uh, technology, the, the Hippocratic Oath a bit, then we've got to deal with three propositions that come out of Paul Revel, and these propositions may be inconvenient truth. Proposition number one is that while the system seems to be broken, it works well for a significant number of students, children, and families. Proposition number two, it doesn't work at all for an increasing number of children. Those children that are now, more of whom are now stranded on the wrong side of a gap that has become a chasm. And thirdly, there's significant support for the status quo. All three of these are inconvenient truths. And if we had five more minutes this afternoon, Lisa may have found a way for her crew to let me play. How many people have seen the video, Black Jobs? Anybody seen that? You see that video? No, she laughs right away. Blame Lisa. <laughs> for, for, you know, I want you to go home and see, I want you to go home and see that video. It is funny. It's, it's called Black Jobs, and it makes the point that we have in this country a broad sentiment 
given expression by a really important messenger, that there are jobs in this country that are marginal in pay, marginal in status, fragile. And these uh, black jobs and jobs for Latinos and others, and that the immigrants are coming for those jobs. In other words, we have a system that produces those jobs, and there are people who are comfortable with those jobs and use the existence of those jobs essentially to create a wave of resentment against him. What Black Jobs said is, who's going to tell him that the job that he's running for may be a black job? <laughs> and in the background, it's like, you know, district attorney, attorney general, vice president, and you hear vaguely President Obama say, and president. That if we saw our country as not divided, and if we wanted to create opportunity for everybody, then we would have a different educational system. So we've got to deal with the inconvenient truth that there are people who support the system. And that's why this work that we're talking about, I want to apply the same principle to this work as we said to, to the AI folks, as we said to Sal Khan and everybody else. And Kathy, this is where we will push each other around on this issue. We've got to make sure that these amazing products that we talked about today, these amazing things, in fact, acknowledge the gap and close the gap. Because if we don't hold ourselves accountable for closing the gap and being intentional and explicit that what we talked about will not only create joyful learning, but will we create create joyful learning for all kids and will close the gap, will essentially help with diversity and will close the gap, and with belonging and will close the gap. If we are not saying that and working toward that, we're going to inadvertently widen and sustain the gap. So that's the challenge to this movement and the challenge to this emerging technology. <laughs> So I have one question for you on that amazing statement. Is it possible to eliminate inequality, to drive equity without collaboration? And have we been in an era in which the atomization of institutions has made it nearly impossible to drive equity because of a lack of collaboration across certain boundaries. I think that we have learned a lot about and from collaboration. But let me make an, let me, let me, let me make an, an observation. I did not hear the term poverty mentioned once today. Did I miss it? <laughs> two times, two times. I missed it, Un unless and until we are prepared to say that those folks in the bottom half of the class are not only disproportionately people of color, but are almost all children of families mired in poverty, we're going to essentially continue and indulge the magical thinking that says if we were just smart enough if we came up with some other tweak and turn, yeah. that we're going to make poor children perform, as it, perform at scale as if they're not poor. That's magical thinking. We have got to be willing to take on poverty. And if we're not willing to do that, then these are really interesting, important, worthy and worthwhile endeavors but they won't create the change and transformation we seek. Now don't, don't go home and tell anybody you applauded that. You might be in trouble with your friends. Well, I mean, it's interesting to note that poverty has not been at the center of 
a conversation about collaboration. I mean, my worry is that we're not taking on wealth to you know, help us think about the ways in which we can retire poverty. Because what we're, what we're seeing in the current discussions in education and in healthcare is, you know, obviously we want to close the gaps, but the gaps are more yawning than ever. Um, so there is this question as to whether or not systems change will be driven by policy or whether it will be, you know, national or state or local policy or whether it's going to be driven by the people who are, you know, working on changing the professions or changing the ways in which, you know, grassroots and bottom-up work comes together. How do those two things come together is the question. I think the conspiracy of silence, the embarrassment, mm -hmm. the fact that the P word is still something that we don't utter, the fact that we're, we are reluctant. And that's why in any setting, I applaud Lisa's courage because Lisa knows that sooner or later, she's gonna hear from me the harangue on poverty, especially when it feels to me that there's silence otherwise. If we don't talk about it, it suggests that we don't think about it and it undermines all of us who I know care about it. And I know there's enormous caring in this room, but we haven't found the language and the courage to seize the opportunity to put it on the table. And unless and until we do, chances are we undermine the work we're doing. Challenge offered. Yes. I. I just want to say, I, I, this is what, we need the provocations. We need the new ways of, of continuing to push ourselves and to say, okay, what's next? What did we miss? What, what are we doing that is going to help us steer in this direction or that one? And, and Ralph always delivers <laughs> on provoking and helping me push and, and helping all of us think. And my goal, too, I, I love the hacks. And I, and I want to have more conversation about those ideas. And there's this there's a policy piece to all of this that we here at New America want to be thinking more deeply about, too. Um, we are at time. There's so much that you guys have now just pulled up for us. We're like, oh my gosh. Um, but stay, we're, stay we, so we, I, want to, I want to do a couple of quick things. You guys just, just stay here for a minute. We're going to put up um, a word cloud in a second. Um, but I first, where we can kind of populate that with some of our thoughts right now and then continue the conversation. Um, but I also just want to say some, some thanks. Um, so this has been an incredible experience um, for me, for our team. Uh, I cannot say enough, uh, Kathy's got to run, but as she's leaving, we have to thank Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. I want to thank Roberta for just being a partner in all of these things with us. Um, thank you, Elise Frankino. Where are you, Elise? I mean, it's really helping to pull this all together. Uh, and then our incredible team here at New America, I just want to call out just how much it does. Pulling these kinds of things off is, is not always easy. And it really does take a lot of people in a lot of different places. So to all of you guys in the studio, Shannon and team, thank you so much um, dealing with all of the different hybrid speakers. I mean, we did it. We got a bunch of people together in lots of different spaces. I'm so thrilled. Um, and a big, uh, just a huge thanks to Carly and Morel and Elena and Anme and Cameron and Mika and all folks who were here today making all of this work. So thank you to my amazing to interrupt. colleagues. And I, I have to interrupt. Could we give a rousing round of applause for the amazing Lisa Guernsey? Amazing, makes me a little emotional. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, it's been it's just incredibly exciting. Um, so we now are gonna we're gonna go for oh and our our funders. Oh my gosh, <laughs> wonderful, They're amazing, anyway. amazing. Um, a big thanks to Foundry Ten, by the way, is why we have those videos. So a huge thanks to them and the Gates Foundation and all this incredible work in the assessment space. So you all might have this QR code. 
um, already. And for those of you who are still online with us, thank you. I think you've got this too. And now we're going to shift on screen. And Shannon, I hope you might still be hearing me because we're going to shift to see what people have put in um, to their for this takeaway question. We basically just wanted you to put one or two words into Slido. <laughs> Hopefully you're able to see it. We'll see. Yes, it comes up. Yes. Ah, so here are some of the things that people are seeing, talking about, thinking right now. Um, this is great. And I think th this is a, a measure for us that we're going to be taking forward. Um, but we also want to keep getting your feedback, your ideas. The online bulletin board, by the way, is really populated. For those of you who have been in that space, thank you. We'll be sending out a link to that so that everyone has those resources and links after the after the event, and we'll also be um, making sure that it's all available, archived on our YouTube channel. So I'm going to let it um, let us be at, at this point, and just say a huge thanks to everyone. And um, okay, now we got to go and and collaborate. So thanks. Thank you.